This is a Fort Stimulus Check stimulus program and news update. We're going to skip the intro. Let's get right into it. So are we going to get a fourth stimulus check? Uh, President Biden said that payments are making a difference, referring to the third stimulus checks that have been going out. He mentioned that the other day in his speech. Now, when it comes to a fourth stimulus check in the government, it's gotten around like 76, 77 lawmakers in Congress who are for the $2,000 per month stimulus check. But a petition urging the government to give $2,000 monthly stimulus checks to every American has surpassed 2 million signatures. So it's really popular among civilians civilians in the government and Congress has kind of stalled a little bit. So in this petition, it says that the three stimulus checks released over the course of a year have not been sufficient to deal with the financial repercussions brought on by the pandemic. Uh, and so it's just the Senate Democrats and House Democrats who are for this fourth stimulus check. So far, it has no support from any Republicans. And more or less, it's pretty much stalled. It hasn't been moving forward ever since. And it's not in the American Families Plan, not in the American Jobs Plan. And President Biden didn't even mention a fourth stimulus check. But this interesting article came out saying that for a fourth stimulus check, billionaires pandemic profits could easily fund two more payments. So this is a unique way to pay for a fourth stimulus check. So basically it's saying that 722 billionaires saw their wealth grow by 35% between January of last year and April 28th of this year. Their collective net, net worths have increased 3.4 trillion to 4.6 trillion today. Basically, they have gained 1.2 trillion dollars for almost doing nothing. Basically, from the stock market, their investment, and other businesses, they've gained 1.2 trillion dollars. The way the math works out is saying that for the 1.2 trillion dollars that was profited by the billionaires, if it was equally divided among all Americans, that would be enough for every single American to receive three payments of a little more than $1,200 or a single payment of $3,600. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Should the billionaires give up their profits that they made during the pandemic or should they be able to keep it because they worked hard for it? Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. Now a quick roundup for the fourth stimulus check as well as other monthly stimulus checks and then I'll get into Bernie Sanders and his clip. So regarding the $2,000 monthly stimulus check, doesn't seem to be moving forward anytime soon and Congress is basically stalling on that. When it comes to the child tax credit being permanent, this is the $250 a month or $300 a month credit. Uh, so far, it's official that it's going to start July 1st and it's just going to be one year. In the American Families Plan, it's supposed to last up until 2025, which is four years. So whether or not it becomes permanent or just for four years, we'll find out over the next few weeks. And then the other uh, plan, which is going to give parents $1,000 checks every month, this is introduced by Senator Josh Hawley. So far, this is just legislation. This is going to give a tax cut up to $12,000 per year, which is going to be divided into a monthly check for only parents that are together who have kids under 13. Any parents that are single with kids under 13, they'll get $500 per month or $6,000 for the year. So far, that is just a proposal, hasn't entered anything with the American Families Plan or Jobs Plan. Then uh, Congress to extend unemployment insurance. So far, the insurance is going to expire in September. There hasn't been any talk of extending it more than that. And then with the student loan cancellation, uh, there hasn't been any new news with that. It's not in the American Families Plan, not in the American Jobs Plan. President Biden hasn't even mentioned it, but Senate Democrats want it to be a, an executive order for $50,000. Uh, so that was a quick roundup. Let me know if you like that type of style of me giving you the latest updates and a quick roundup like that. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. So next, let's talk about how Bernie Sanders says that the, that the U.S. needs progressive taxation on the wealthy to pay for Biden's infrastructure proposal. Here's the latest clip of him talking about taxation. Welcome back. Two times in 2016 and 2020, Bernie Sanders ran for president as an unapologetic progressive, seeking vast increases in government social spending. Both times he lost the Democratic nomination to perceived to be more cautious centrist candidates, Hillary Clinton in 2016, Joe Biden last year. But with President Biden's proposals for vast new spending, it's fair to ask, did Senator Sanders lose the battles but win the party's war of ideas? Well, Bernie Sanders joins me now. Senator Sanders, I saw you smirk there when I did that little tease about that. Um, so go ahead and answer the question. Do you feel as if, you know, when you look at your two campaigns, yes, you're not president, um, but do you feel as if you won the war of ideas inside your party? Well, it's not just me. I think what you saw is millions of people standing up, 
grassroots activists standing up and saying, you know what? At a time of massive income and wealth inequality, maybe, and Chuck, this is a radical idea, but maybe, just maybe, government should represent the needs of a struggling working class and middle class and not just the 1% and wealthy campaign contributors. And I think all over this country, people said, look, there are massive problems exacerbated by the pandemic. And I think President Biden looked around and he said, you know what? We've got to address those problems, not worry about the rich and the powerful. So we are beginning to make some progress in dealing with issues that have been neglected for decades. I'm curious, your uh, focus, it, when it comes to seeing these plans get passed, how important is the pay for part of this conversation? Um, how much of this in your mind is you're willing, you know what, deficit spending, these are investments, you'll get return. And how important do you think it is that you reform the tax code and use that to pay for this? Well, I think, number one, most importantly, we have to deal with the crises facing this country. Uh, we have massive income and wealth inequality. Half our people live on paycheck to paycheck. We've got to raise the minimum wage to a living wage. You've got to do that. We have an infrastructure that is collapsing. We have got to dr- address the existential threat of climate change. And when you do that, Chuck, when you make those investments, we create millions of good paying jobs. We have we are the only major country not to guarantee health care to all people as a right. The only major country not to have paid family and medical leave. We pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Hundreds of thousands of kids can't afford to go to college and millions leave school deeply in debt. Well, you know what? You got to address those issues. Meanwhile, You got two people on top who own more wealth than the bottom 40% of America. You got major corporation after major corporation not paying one nickel in federal income tax. Warren Buffett, one of the richest guys in the world, reminds us that the effective tax rate for working families is higher than it is for the billionaire class. So in terms of pay for, yeah, I do think we need progressive taxation, Mm -hmm. which says to the very rich, Biden says the cap should be the the floor should be four hundred thousand. Yeah. Nobody under that should pay more in taxes. But yes, the very rich and large corporations should stop paying their fair share of taxes to help us rebuild America and create the jobs that we need. Uh, if you have to make the choice, because some of your Democratic Senate colleagues seem to have a little bit of nervousness about voting for some of these tax increases, but they will vote for the spending. Will you take the spending if it doesn't come with the with the with the tax increases? Well, the devil is in the details, obviously. Mm -hmm. But I think what has got to happen uh, is we have got to begin addressing the enormous crises facing this country. And that is what I think the president is trying to do. I think once we start discussing these issues Mm -hmm. in the Congress, there will be differences of opinion. But I think there is a consensus, at least within the Democratic caucus, that now is the time to start protecting working families and the middle class, and not just the 1%. I don't always agree with Bernie Sanders, but he does have a great point, and he sticks up for the little people compared to the rich. Uh, let me know what we think about what he said. Also, Bernie Sanders is going or wants to expand Medicare, which was not in a Biden's plan, along with 17 other senators to uh, lower the age eligibility, as well as include other parts of the Medicare expansion. Here's Bernie Sanders talking more about Medicare expansion. One of the things not included in the president's uh, plan was some things that you wanted to see, including lowering the uh, eligibility age to Medicare, uh, in particular being the the biggest one there. Um, And I want to ask you about it in conjunction with this statement that James Carville made, and I want to bring it up here. It has to do with um, Joe Manchin. He says, the Democratic Party can't be more liberal than Senator Joe Manchin. That's the fact. We don't have the votes. And I I bring this up because (laughs) Senator Manchin has said he's not in favor of lowering that eligibility age. Do you think that was probably why why Joe Biden didn't include your provision in his plan? uh, No, I don't think so. James Carville can live in his world. I don't think he's terribly relevant to what happens in Congress right now. Uh, Here is the story. Very simple story is that right now, For the last 55 years, since Medicare was developed in 1965, it has not included coverage for dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses. And I can tell you, 
in Vermont and all over this country. You got te- you got senior citizens whose teeth are rotting in their mouth, older people who can't talk to their grandchildren because they can't hear them because they can't afford a hearing aid, and people who can't read a newspaper because they can't afford glasses. So to say that dental care and hearing aids and eyeglasses should be a part of Medicare makes all the sense in the world. Second of all, we're gonna pay for this. This is a pay for. Right now, as I think every American understands, we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. We're getting ripped off every day by the pharmaceutical industry, who in some cases charges us 10 times more for the same drug that's sold in Canada or in other countries. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is what the American people want to do. We want to negotiate prescription drug prices with the industry through Medicare. When you do that, you save about $500 billion, and that can cover Mm -hmm. the cost of dental care, eyeglasses and hearing aid under Medicare, as well as lowering the eligibility age to 60. That's what we have to do. We have to pay for for that. So far, the Medicare expansion that has been introduced by Bernie Sanders and 17 other senators isn't in the American Families Plan so far, but over the next few weeks, and hopefully not months, they're going to start negotiating and put together the official American Families Plan, and then it's either going to pass through reconciliation or they're going to try to get Republicans on board as well. I'll keep you updated on what happens with that. Next, I'm going to answer the questions you leave for me in the comments. Sherry Speakman asks, my daughter and son-in-law have purchased their first home this year will they be eligible for the help in buying their first home so according to that proposal it'll start january of 2021 so if you bought a house january of 2021 up until in the future uh, and you meet the income eligibility requirements then yes you can still qualify for that Uh, but the income eligibility requirements are important it's uh, i went over it in more detail in yesterday's video uh next we have Diana Rainey saying, I was going to sign the recurring checks petition, but it says closed. It was the change.org, right? Um, So yeah, basically uh, in today's video and yesterday's video, I went in more detail. I showed that petition of the $2,000 monthly checks. It says closed as the picture, but that's just the restaurant that closed. The petition is actually still open. They're trying to get it up to 3 million uh, signers right now. So that is still open. Uh, Also, next question comes from Marilyn Coleman. I keep hearing certain things uh, will stay in effect until the end of the pandemic in 2025. We'd love to know how the president knows that will be the end of it in 2025. Thank you so much. So there are certain provisions that are going to end in 2025. We don't know if the pandemic is going to last that long. Hopefully not. It doesn't last that long. But there, when we mentioned 2025, the child tax credit, as well as a few other things, that's just when they're going to end it, uh, not when the pandemic ends. Uh, anyways, that is all the stimulus news I have for you today. To hopefully cheer you up a bit, here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, it's Bella tip of the day. I want to tell you the one thing that you should do. Do the things that scare you the most because that after you do that, you become a better person. Bye. Thank you so much for watching up until this point. I would love some more feedback from you. So I cut the intro today. I kind of made it a little shorter. I saw in the comments some of you like that. Uh, Let me know if you could just write the word feedback in the comments and give me any feedback. I tried to save as much time for you as possible. Uh, Let me know if there's anything else I could do for you to make this a better viewing experience, if I could give you more information, other topics. I just want to serve you the best way I can. And I thank you so much for for all of your support. I really appreciate it. Uh, If you want to watch more stimulus updates, you could click this link down over here. Or if you want to check out my other channel, Wise Vibes, get some inspiration and motivation for the day, you could click this video up here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.